I'm Chantelle Roberts, and I'm an expert witness for claims handling standards, practices, and procedures. I was an adjuster for 20 plus years. The Art of Adjusting is a vlog to help professionals and laypeople alike understand a bit more about the insurance claims industry. Today, we'll be talking about self-insured retentions, or SIRs. For the sake of brevity and clarity, I'll refer to the business who has an SIR as the, quote, insured, even though it should be clear that there is not an insurance policy involved in these types of claims when the business is self-insured. For most lay people, and, and even the insurance professionals themselves, they are not familiar with what an SIR actually is. In this case, the insured doesn't have the same regulatory oversight as an insurer or an adjuster, and the lack of regulatory oversight can directly touch the principles of indemnity, good faith claims handling, and the superior knowledge of an insurance professional to a layperson. SIRs are specific amounts which must be paid before the insurer or the overlying carrier will assume the handling of the file. Deductibles, on the other hand, are well known in the property claims book of business. This is where an insurer will deduct the amount that a insured states that they want to pay themselves as opposed to a self-insured retention, which means that there's absolutely no policy at all. So there's nothing to deduct. A lot of times the SIRs and deductibles are confused, uh, but they're not the same thing. Neither New York nor California believe a business who is insuring itself must act like an insurer. Therefore, the insured can, quote, delay, deny, and defend a loss or simply ignore the claim if that's what they want to do. And while this may horrify insurers, there's little that they can do because all too often they signed that right away when they allowed the insured to handle its own claims. And all too often, the overlying policy does not have specific language dictating when the self-insureds must notify the overlying carrier of claims which fall outside of the retention. In some jurisdictions, the self-insured may not even owe a good faith duty to the overlying carrier to settle claims within their retained limits. So in this example, an insured could simply know, well, the most that we will pay is $500,000. So let's go ahead and take this to suit and see what happens because if we get a judgment over this $500,000, our insurer will have to pay. And that's a very tempting reason to delay, deny, defend the loss because the insured knows that there is a cap on the amount that they will pay. Courts have admonished insurance professionals for its superior knowledge and failure to advise an insured of a possible hazard. And insurers have willingly given control to the insureds and the insureds can explicitly ignore the advice of the claims administrators. But, but should the industry control the insured who doesn't follow the good faith claims handling standards? I don't have an answer, but as someone who's handled these types of claims, I personally used quote unquote insurance language with claimants. I talked about settling a claim. I talked about the fact that they needed to sign a release before we could close the claim. And so these claimants don't know that there's not an insurance company standing behind me. They don't know that, that it's just the insured's business. Therefore, the insured's bad acts could reflect poorly on the entire industry. So this week I've discussed self-insured retentions or SIRs. Although an attractive idea, it may not be everything that it's cracked up to be if the insured can flout good faith claims handling practices. But every claim is different and every insurer and every insured has different protocols for handling losses. But this being in the litigated world that we're in, 
please see below for some legalese. Few claims go to a jury trial and picking the expert who has been deposed the most or who's gone to trial the most may not be the correct expert. Failing to have a second set of eyes on a claim in order to save on expenses may not be the best way to resolve a loss. As an expert witness and former claims adjuster, I'm sharing my experience in the art of adjusting. Thank you for listening. I appreciate your time. Oh, <laughs>